let's talk about drawing fair. And I want to cover the main mistakes that I tend to see people making. I think it'll be easiest if I make it sort of as a list. So let's cover the do's and don'ts of drawing fair. And I'll start off by going through the specifics, but later in the video, I'll show you the process that I use to draw fair. And I'll show you all of this by using this bunny drawing. Now I'm going to specifically cover how to draw fair. I'm not gonna worry about anything like the proportions. I'm gonna assume that all of that is already right. So first up, what you don't want to do is go straight in with the fair texture. I frequently see people do this rather than putting down any kind of color whatsoever on the paper. They just go straight into making some kind of fair like motions, just straight onto usually white paper. What you'll miss out on if you do this is all of the richness behind the fur. What I strongly recommend is building up some base layers first. So putting down some of the main colors in a really smooth way, not worrying about the fur texture before going into adding any of those flicks. And I'll show you towards the end of the video a little bit more what I mean by that. Next up, don't press too hard when building up the texture. If you're trying to make fur like flicks on the page, but you're pressing really hard, you're gonna end up making some really harsh lines. They're not gonna look very soft and natural. I like to go in really, really lightly with the pencil, just slightly brushing it against the paper, and it makes some much softer, more natural lines. And that's related quite nicely to the next point, don't use a blunt pencil. If you use a blunt pencil, it's gonna make some much thicker lines, no matter how careful you are in comparison to a sharp pencil. Every Every single time that I'm drawing fair texture, I always make sure that my pencil is really nice and sharp. I'm sharpening it really frequently so that it has a really good point. And that is again gonna make these much softer, more delicate lines that will look more natural. The next thing that I've seen people doing is building up the fair texture, just one color in each area. So just using gray, for example, and just one dark gray, rather than using a series of different grays or maybe some browns, some blacks, whatever color can be seen in the fur. If you use a variety of colors, your fur texture is gonna be a lot more interesting. It's gonna, again, have a lot more depth to it and end up looking more natural. If you were to actually look at an animal's fur, it wouldn't all be in one color. Now a really important one next that I think a lot of people don't think about, don't build up all of your fur in the same way. So what I mean by this is that the fur on an animal doesn't tend to all be the same length, for example. On this rabbit, you'll notice that the hair around the ears is a lot shorter than the hair on the chest. And the hair on the face is generally a bit more mid-length. So I want to be making flicks with the pencil of different lengths, depending on the fur. Short flicks around the ear, slightly longer flicks on the face and much longer flicks on the body. And that's gonna create the illusion of a more natural fur. I also want to be really thinking about the different directions. So frequently it seems people just put the fur all going in one direction. What you want to be doing, again, if you're drawing from a reference photo, is really looking at the direction of that fur. It's very unlikely to be all going in the same direction. You want to follow the direction you can actually see. Final thing to think about when building up that fur texture is the density of the fur. So I always think that this is particularly obvious on cats. They have very, very dense fur, generally between their eyes, whereas around here, it is is much more sparse. So you want to be making really close flicks with the pencil for the areas with more dense fur and flicks further apart for more sparse areas. And my final don't is don't build up the texture and then think you're done. I feel like if you do this, it just ends up looking wiry. Don't get very soft looking fur. I highly recommend building up that fur texture and then going back over the top of it really lightly and as smoothly as possible, just to kind of blend all of that fur texture out. It doesn't take away all of the texture. It just softens it so that it looks more natural. So those are my main do's and don'ts for drawing fur. Let me show you the process that I always use to draw fur because I do always do it in the same way. So I'll show you as I'm drawing this bunny, the same bunny that we've been looking at for the rest of the video. But before we do that, if you do want to draw this with me, it is available on my Patreon. I have a whole host of different drawings in both color pencil and graphite pencil. And for every tutorial, you'll get in-depth instructions, all of the real-time footage, the full list of materials I'll be using, sketch outlines, and of course the reference photo. 
This rabbit was a slightly faster drawing. It took about three and a half hours, but I also have some longer, more complicated drawings. Check out the link in the description. So as I mentioned, I always like to start the drawing with base layers. So I generally start from the lighter colors and work my way up towards the darker colors. My goal here isn't to build any texture. I just want to get some really smooth color down of those key background colors. So for this rabbit, for example, I started with the absolute lightest gray in my set and I could then start working my way through the grays through a mid gray and then a darker gray and then even a black to really fill in where those darker areas are going to be. Now the key thing here is that I don't want to be pressing hard. I want to be pressing really, really nice and lightly, which I can do by holding the pencil further back than you might think, about halfway down the barrel. That just stops me from being able to press too hard. And I tend to work in circular motions. It gets the pencil down in a much smoother way. Now mapping out the colors like this not only gives me a nice base that I can build up all of the texture on, but also kind of helps me to get my bearings. I can map out the key shapes of the rabbit and it helps me to see what needs to go where. From here, I can start building up my fur texture. So again, starting with those same colors, starting at the lighter colors, working my way towards the darker colors. And I just want to be gently brushing my pencil against the paper, making some really, really soft flicks. As I said a little bit earlier, I want to be focusing on the length of the hair, the direction of the hair. I would say it's all pretty much the same densities. It's all very dense fur here. So I want to be putting the flicks reasonably close together. Don't forget to have a really sharp pencil. Once I've built up all of that texture, it now looks a little bit scratchy. I can then start working my way back down through those colors. So starting at the darker color and working my way down through the grays. Once again, putting the pencil down in as smooth a way as possible. So generally speaking with circular motions, gradually increasing my pressure as I go. I find the more pencil I build up, I need to start pressing slightly harder. At the end, I can add the last few tweaks, go back to that black, add in the darkest values once again, and that is it. So I hope that this helps you improve your fur texture. If you'd like to go through the general method that I use for drawing fur in a bit more detail, check out this video here. Happy drawing guys, and I'll see you in the next one.